All right, everyone, right here we have the strobe circuit set up. What you have to do is you take the normal blinking circuit and you're going to add to it two things, and only two things, a diode and a resistor. This diode connects pins. You start at pin 7, you put the diode in, the resistor then goes to pin 2. You can see the circuit diagram on the screen, okay? On a diode, the silver band represents where the positive end is. So we're going negative to positive across this way of the diode. All right? Now let me turn this on. It's just blinking. What the heck? I mean, what the heck? You know, I've got a blinking circuit. Well, let me explain two things. This one right here controls the black spe the the time of the black part. Ooh. This right here controls the time of the black part. In other words, it controls the time the thing is off. This one right here controls the blink duration. Okay? This is R3 from before. Alright? I'm pretty sure it's R3 from before. Let me check. Okay, I'm having a fun day and not being prepared before we start these videos. But... Yeah, that's R3 from before, okay? This controls how long it's lit up. This one controls how long it's off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that and replace that with a rheostat, okay? So I'm putting the two ends of my rheostat in here on my variable resistor. You can already see she's strobing. Okay, I can have her blink, or I can go on a very long strobe, just by varying this resistance. Okay, now the resistance I'm varying there is R2 from before. I'm varying R2 from before. Alright, now that I got her strobing, I want to try something. I want to try to take my other rheostat and replace this one up here with my other rheostat if it's going to cooperate with me which it may not do here we go because I didn't try this before okay you can see we got a pretty quick blink now I'm going to turn my rheostat up and see it's shortening the blink so between these two here, I can actually control how long this thing blinks. Okay? You can see that's controlling the length of time the LED is lit up. This one here does. The resistor that goes here, that's R3. This resistor is controlling the time between blinks. So when I start changing this one, it takes longer to go between blinks. You see that? So there we go. Adding a diode and a resistor gives me the strobe circuit. Okay, real simple fix to turn it into a strober. All right, now, the only other thing left to really discuss with you guys is, you notice I got two variable resistors here, two rheostats. Let me zoom this out a little bit so you guys can see them a little bit better. You notice I got two rheostats here. This is one I'm changing to control between blinks. See, I changed that one, and the, blink, the time between blinks speeds up. Or it gets real long. What I do is I sit in front of the video and I try to get this to match what I see in the video from my strobe rates. Okay, by turning these two dials. Turn this one, it turns the duration. I need a different uh, rheostat here. This rheostat's not a good value on it because it doesn't go off a big enough range for me to really change that blink rate too much. But anyhow, 
you guys get the idea what I'm doing here. And just in case you're curious, this right here is the strobe circuit I built. It's this exact same circuit. It's 9 volts. It's set to run um, a white LED. Okay? You're noticing the extra capacitor in here. This extra capacitor is to stop the signal link. Uh, signal leak out of the circuit. It's a 100 microfarad 16 volt capacitor. This is a higher voltage capacitor than the one used for timing because it is seeing the full 15 volts. The, I mean, the full 15 volts the power supply can provide. So I'm using a higher voltage capacitor so I don't fry it. Okay? And I'm going to put those circuit diagrams up on the video as well so you can see the circuit diagrams that contain the extra capacitor to keep this thing from dying. I hope you enjoyed the videos on the 555 timer circuit. Now, I'm going to stop the camera for a little bit and so I can change its position so I can talk to you guys. So I'll be back in a second. All right, folks, we're here to talk about conclusions. A couple of things I forgot. One, diodes. I didn't explain much about what a diode was or what diode is I'm particularly using. This diode has, let me get it, it has IN400 printed on it. That means it's a one amp diode. Diodes are rated in how much current they can handle. A two amp diode can handle two amps before it breaks down. Less than 2 amps is fine, so if you want to put a 2 amp diode in there, go for it. You just don't need to, okay? I went to my local electronics store and said, I need a diode. He said, what for? I told him for LEDs to give me a 1 amp diode. Okay, I'm, they probably come in half amp diodes, but this is fine. They're cheap. Who cares? All right? Now, having said that about the diodes, let's do a, a quick conclusion on this. When do I use the 4060? When do I use the 555? What's the deal here? Well, here's the deal. If I'm going on batteries, 4060. If I just want things to blink, 4060. If I need strobing, 555. That's the only choice I have. I mean, you guys can see I got one strobing right here. The 555 must be the one that strobes. Okay? And another thing, you know, if I only want one or two blinking LEDs, the 4060 is great. But if I'm building something like the 1350 Enterprise Refit, where I've got seven or eight navigation lights going on and off at the same time, I can't do that with the 4060. I'm going to have to use a 555 on that. Mainly because it can power 10 to 15 LEDs at once. Whereas the 4060 can do maybe three. I've had it doing three. I haven't tried to get it to do four. I'm afraid to see what it looks like if it does four. That's why I haven't tried that. But I know it can do three. Okay? So, I have to take those sort of things in consideration too. So, when I do finally get to the 1350 refit, I have it sitting on a shelf in there. I'm going to use the 555 timer chip. When I get back to the NX, eventually, sometime next year, yeah, it'll be next year before I get to back to that, unfortunately. When I get back to that NX, I'm going to be using 555s. You've, I've already built them. Here's the strobe circuit. I'm going to be using 555s simply because there are literally 5 to 10 navigation blinking lights at the same time. So 555 will handle that. The 4060 won't. Okay? So basically, cockpit lighting, like I want some blinking lights in a cockpit, 4060. I'm building a computer wall, 4060, because I can have lights blinking on and off at all sorts of different rates there say something like the Jupiter 2 or the C57D that have computer walls of blinking lights or let's say you get on eBay and find the Bionic Woman model with Oscar Goldman repairing her leg and there's a computer behind them. I'm going to use a 4060 for that. Yeah, I actually found that on eBay and bought it recently. Don't know why. Um, so there's kind of a rundown when I'm going to use which one. Now, I know my lighting videos are missing a few things. One, I haven't done any lighting plans, like sat down with the model and said, this is where I want the lights go, this is the voltage I'm going to use, this is why. I'm going to do that with the Millennium Falcon. I'm going to do that with the A-Wings. 
Okay? The A wings are going to get a 4060 timing chip. Primarily because the little one's going to get powered by a 9 volt battery. And a 4060 isn't going to drain the 9 volt. I'm only going to have like four LEDs in the whole thing, maybe five. They're not going to drain the 9 volt battery very quick at all. Okay? The big one, I probably won't use a 9 volt battery on because. I want to use, if possible, some half watt LEDs in those engine cans, make them really bright. Because Star Wars ships seem to think that's the way to go. Brighter the better on the engines. Alright? And Star Trek didn't do that. Babylon 5 didn't do that so much. In fact, Babylon 5, some of those didn't even have engines lit. But get, I digress. Getting back into this. So, with the big one, if I use those half watt LEDs, it's going to drain a 9 volt battery in a matter of hours, a half hour or so, and I'm going to be constantly flipping in and out batteries. So I'm probably just going to use a wall wart with that one. Okay? So we'll discuss all that. Plus there's some other tricks I haven't shown you guys, like when I built the Viper for Battlestar Galactica, I didn't use any resistors on the LEDs because I cheated. And I'll explain that in a little bit. Some of you know about that methodology of cheating, some don't. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the lighting videos, and, and I know a lot of my viewers didn't follow with them that well because they're just not into that, but I also know some of you guys were just like, wow, this is great. So I'm finishing up mainly for you guys, um, and again, I'm going to go over some basics when I build the Falcon and the A-Wings that I miss with these. Like, you notice with the A-Wings, I went over soldering better. The camera angle was bad, and I know that. I'm going to use the new camera angle that I used on this. I'm going to get the Millennium Falcon and do some soldering there. But I found a whole bunch of uh, LEDs with resistors on them in there, and i got to figure out what that is. I might just use those. Well, anyhow, I'm rambling. Hope you enjoyed. I will be back building models soon. Yeah, within a day or two. I'm posting these videos that quick. Have a good one. Oh. I forgot to add that part, yeah, posting videos. Um, I've got an hour to three hours a day to work on models, so four, three or four days a week. So I'm generating a lot of video quickly, and I'm quickly falling behind where the models are being built. I'm much further along with the Millennium Falcon than the videos suggest. I'm starting to rip off piping and replace it on the Millennium Falcon, and once I'm done with that, I can start actually doing the lighting. Um... So I'm going to start accelerating how often the videos come up. I'm going to try to give you guys a day or two between each video. But with my build rate the way it is right now, I've got seven or eight videos I'm behind already. Okay? So we're going to get the videos out a little bit quicker. I'm not going to put one up every day because I know you guys just can't watch that and I'll lose a bunch of you. So I'm going to try to give it two or three days between each video. If, if you guys want me to give it a longer period, leave it in the comments. I know four or five of you guys are going to be excited to hear I'm putting videos up that often. Anyhow, I got to go. I got to go feed the belly. It's hungry. And I got to go work on this thing. Gift from hands three and four for Christmas. I got to wear it with pride. Not got to. I am wearing it with pride. Probably going to get worn to work this week too, just so everyone at work can see how geeky I am. Bunch of college students. That'll be fun. Have a good one, guys.